Tag TV and Tag Radio, be seen and heard by both technology users and technology producers throughout the state of Georgia and around the world. Low cost, big benefits, powerhouse online branded video and audio has arrived. Tag TV, Tag Radio, there's a lot more to know. IT, once the main provider and gatekeeper of application devices and network access. Today, some experts say that a shadow IT exists, an environment that hangs over every organization as end users adopt new cloud services, accessing them from anywhere on any device, often without IT approval or any other governance. Some say shadow IT cloud usage is at least 10 times the size of known cloud usage. Do legacy management and security products have the visibility to find, understand, or control cloud service usage and risk? Or is IT flying blind? Greetings, everyone. It's Friday, September 27, 2013, and this is Tech Talk with Technology Association of Georgia President Tino Mantella. Up to the Tech Talk, he wants to shine a light on shadow IT, Rajiv Gupta. And does he ever know what he's talking about? Consider this. Rajim has 45 patents. He's the inventor or co-inventor of some of the Sentinel concepts that underpin web services. Today, he is the co-founder and is CEO of Sky High Networks, a software technology that once again is proving his widely recognized description as a pioneer of web services. Former VP and general manager within Cisco, where his team was responsible for products that enabled consumers consistent access policies across the IT stack. He was the founder and CEO of Securant, a company acquired by Cisco. Rajim was also co-founder and CEO of Confluent Software, which was acquired by Obix Oracle. He spent 11 years at Ewart Packard, ending his stay with them as general manager of the eSpeak division, a division he started to market a technology he and his team developed at HP Labs. eSpeak has been inducted into the Smithsonian National Museum. Rajim's work on client utility computing was the precursor to cloud services as we know them today, shining the light on shadow IT, a clear tech talk insight into the good, the bad, and the IT you may just have flying blind in the cloud. With web services pioneer and the highly acclaimed visionary, Sky High Network co-founder and CEO, Rajim Gupta. This edition of Tech Talk is brought to you by Globalspeak.com, new media consultants, corporate video and audio communications, video and audio production and distribution, live and virtual event production. Tag TV and Tag Radio is a service of Globalspeak.com, creatively delivering powerful marketing, video, and audio solutions. Rajiv, thank you for joining me on Tech Talk today. Uh, thank you very much, Gina. Thanks for having me. So uh, some of our listeners may not be familiar with uh, Sky High Network, so talk about your business. Yeah, so um, if, you, if you look at what's happening in the industry today, uh, there is a term called cloud or cloud services, and this term refers to services that many of you have heard of, which is like Salesforce.com or even Gmail, and, and, and the services that you've heard of that you, that you feel, that your employees feel, uh, that they want to use because it makes them more productive. And what we do at Sky High is we help organizations get the best of some of these cloud services, but while making sure that some of the downsides of using cloud services are addressed. Uh, just one statement on this, you know, IDC made a comment, I think they, uh, in a report they published, they said cloud can have an impact on the industry that rivals that of the PC more than 25 years ago. And we, we believe that we're seeing that in our, in our customers today. And, and, and our customers are adopting cloud, not our customers, I mean, every company that we know of is adopting cloud, you know, in a very, uh, viral, uncontrolled fashion. And in some sense, that's good because that's helping them get the agility they want to look, they, they, they aspire for. Uh, but, uh, the same analysts have also written that, that security is, is one of the biggest impediments to cloud services. And that's the gap that we help them fill. We help them companies gain the agility, the cost benefit of using these cloud services while addressing the security uh, concerns such that they, they, they don't run afoul of their compliance and governance needs. So really, if I understand it, it's, it's uh, being uh, 
consultative, uh, helping them think through what the options are, being mindful of uh, you know the importance of security. Is, is that a pretty good summary? Or actually, it's interesting you mentioned that. It's consultative in the sense that we uh, we give them real insights, right, about what's happening, uh, and I'll give you a little more detail on that. But it's not consultative in the sense that we are not just simply t uh, telling them what to do. We're actually doing it for them, right? Oh. So, so, so it, it is really an operational service. It's not a consulting service. It's not a professional, ser professional services-driven kind of engagement. This is where, we, where we, we address the security concerns, where we, for example, encrypt their data or we make sure that th that data is not lost as it's moving to a cloud service, where we make sure that, that only the mobile devices they approve can be allowed to access the cloud services they care about. Right? So, so, again, if I, if I was to give you some, a quick description, uh, as I mentioned, the adoption of these cloud services is viral and uncontrolled, right? Um, right. And in that, in that same viral adoption, uh, a lot of our, our, our customers, not just our customers, most companies in the industry don't have a good handle on what is their current exposure. How many of these cloud services are currently being used by their employees to do what, right? So, again, as an example, uh, uh, you know, most customers we speak with, they think that their employees are using between a dozen to two dozen cloud services. If you push them, they say, okay, maybe 50 cloud services are being used by my employees. We, uh, we have data through, you know, in, in working with these customers that on average, there are 545 cloud services being used by wow. our organizations. So it's going to be exactly. So if you think they're using 30 or 40, but you find out they're really using 545, that's an OMG or oh crap or holy shit moment, whatever it is, right? And so the first thing we do is we help them understand what is the current exposure. The next is we help them understand what is the risk of that exposure, right? So, so you know, um, are they using a service that's high risk? And a high risk service may be one where your data can be compromised very easily. A high risk may be a service where uh, you know, you don't have the, the service is not, for example, meeting any of the common certifications that are required. A high risk service may be one where the terms and conditions of the use of the service say that any data you store with us belongs to us, right? So obviously, you don't want employees using that. Um, so we help them understand, you know, what are the high risk services in use, what are the lower services in use. We help them understand if there's any any high risk behavior that the employees are, are, are indulging in. Um, so, for example, you know, if my employees are using Salesforce. Uh, but a, a, um, uh, a, a salesperson who normally downloads opportunities a day from Salesforce is suddenly downloading 500 opportunities a day every day. You know, that may be a problem, right? Or if I'm using Workday for HR and I have employees in the U.S., but suddenly my, my Workday account is being accessed from China, you know, that may be an indication that there's a problem there, right? So that's, that's the analysis. And the third piece is then where we help them gain some remedial control of this where they can either block the use of high risk services or they may not want to block the use of, let's say, Box for file sharing, but they want to make sure that data stored in Box is, is, is encrypted with their keys or that, you know, there isn't any, any security compromise that data can get leaked out, uh, you know. So, so th that's, that's what we help uh, uh, customers do. Well, that makes a lot of sense, and it seems like from my vantage point, we talk to a lot of the CIOs and, and groups like chief marketing officers as well, and because uh, cloud services, as you pointed out, are viral and so accessible at this point, um, it provides, uh, would you say it provides, unless a group like you come in to support, uh, less controls from a group like a CIO in terms of what's actually happening um, in you know companies of any size. I think I would guess probably the larger companies, it, it, it exacerbates itself. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, your, your, your question is, is it's not only insightful, but also con very controversial, which yeah. is, you know, when, when Nicholas Carr wrote his infamous uh, article about does IT matter, um, you know, some people today are calling cloud services as a revenge of the line of business, right, where the line of business is doing what they really need to do without IT getting in the way. Um, and and I, I think, as I said, this is, this is a very controversial topic and, and sort of getting a lot of debate right now. I think the, the point is that the IT organization that takes a very – backward approach, right, that says all cloud services is bad. You know, we don't use any cloud service. Right. Um, is that IT organization is precisely the one that runs the risk of becoming irrelevant, right, because our employees are 
when you add friction to them doing their job, they're just going to go around you, right? And and you know, it's, it's not as if you can you can control it. Um, so, for example, you know, it, it, the the comment I made earlier is even in industries like financial services and healthcare, which are highly regulated, the number of cloud services, number of high risk cloud services in use is very very high, right? So, so the regulations alone don't don't actually uh, do the job in terms of making sure that you know that our employees are are well contained and they don't do things we don't want them to do. So the IT organization that takes that kind of approach that says, oh, I'm going to block you know um, services that that reduce the productivity of my employees, I think that, I think that that IT organization uh, runs the risk of being irrelevant because I, I, our employees are saying, hey, you treat me like an adult, right? You tell me what you want done and treat and 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 uh, you know rate me based on how I deliver on that. Don't worry about whether I, you know, whether I'm, I'm using Facebook or not at work, right? In some cases, Facebook is important for me to use at work. But the IT organizations that are taking a more enabling approach that are saying, hey, listen, you know, the reason my employees are using a file sharing service is because they need it for their job, right? So instead of saying you can't use file sharing, let me, let me tell them which file sharing service is a low risk one. Let me put some controls around it. Uh, such that the, my employees using the file sharing service you know, does not inadvertently compromise confidential data, that, uh, that idea of position, which is more of an enabler, I think is the one that's going to be more of a business partner. The CIO is going to become more relevant and more important for the business moving forward than the ones that are picking up very kind of, you know, yesterday-based approach of just blocking things just because, you know, their belief is everything that's provided from the outside is bad, everything that's provided from the inside is good. That's a good segue into my uh, next question. So talking about customers, I think we could apply it to the broader um, question of anybody delivering cloud services, but specific to Sky High Networks. Um, who is your customer? And I'd ask that in a couple different ways. One is uh, related to who do you work with, and I know it varies, but who do you generally work with in, uh, in organizations, what level of position, and then what sort of companies uh, – are you focusing on as an enterprise side, and and also you're you're beginning to move into the uh, the Georgia area, so I think our you know our uh, listeners would be interested to hear about that as well. Okay, sure. So so fundamentally, let's let's ask the question of of what kind of company would find the Sky High service to be interesting, right? I mean, that's where that's where it stops, right? If it's not interesting, it doesn't matter how I want to sell it; they wouldn't want to buy it. Exactly. And 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 today. Every company that is that is so we have customers today that the smallest customer is 500 employees, okay, and the largest customer is 250,000 employees, right? Right. And we have customers in financial services, and healthcare, and manufacturing, and high tech, and media entertainment, and legal, and insurance. It's it's across the board, right? Because the point being that every company wants to use wants to gain the benefit of cloud services, right? Wants to gain the benefit of the agility and the cost benefit and the, 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 the uh, paper use and the flexibility and scalability of, for example, using Salesforce or using Box or using Jive or using 365, right? So every company, in effect, um, uh, is, is using cloud services, is today, by and large, running blind in terms of, you know, what, what these cloud services mean to the organization from the perspective of, Risk or you know which which services need to have sort of additional controls applied to it. So, in that sense, every company, like I said, you know, uh, you know, 500 employees and above needs a service like Sky High to help them responsibly and safely gain the benefit of cloud services. Right. Um, the within within an organization, as you, uh, the question you asked, you know, is, is who is the primary customer? Yeah. And and and. Very often, it, it, it is the CIO because the CIO, as you, as you, as you pointed out earlier, the CIO is the one who has this perspective of, hey, how am I helping? How is my IT organization helping the, the company move forward? How are we helping, uh, you know, the lines of business sort of be more effective, the employees be more productive and efficient, right? And, and in some sense, I, the CIO, am worried about, hey, if I don't do that, I'll become irrelevant, right? So the CIO very often... Is, is a is, is sort of the the primary buyer, but then it depends on depends on different companies. So in some cases, it's the chief information security officer, the CISO, uh, who really cares about it, and and you know um, it could be it could be uh, the uh, somebody in the, in the information security team. Uh, we have uh, folks, for example, 
you know, uh, some of our customers, the, the VP of sales says, hey, listen, I'm very interested about how uh, my employees are using Salesforce.com. So I'm interested in that, you know, while you work with the CI and everybody else, that's great. But, you know, I, I don't need to discover my people are using Salesforce. I know they're using Salesforce. I just need to make sure my, my you know, my data is secure in Salesforce, right? So it, it depends, but by and large, it's the CIO. Let me give you one more comment which, uh, very quickly, which is what we are finding, and again, not surprisingly, that cloud is a board-level discussion in the sense that, so for example, you know, one of our, one of our uh, customers is Equinix. And the CI of Equinix is a guy called Brian Lilly, very bright guy. You should, you should, you should have him on, on your radio show sometime. He made a very, very um, witty comment. He said that we have gone from CIO to CI no, right? Mm -hmm. Because we say, we say no all the time. Mm -hmm. And he said, he said, that's not where I want to be. I want to become the chief enabler for my business, right? right. And, and he mentioned that he actually shared the insight he provided with him the controls they provided to him with the board of directors of Equinix because cloud is a board-level discussion from the point of view of, hey, we heard that company say $4 million or $3 million or, or $500, 500K or $20 million using cloud services. Why aren't we doing that? Or we heard that company had a, had a, had a uh, compliance penalty because they used that service. I hope you're not using it. Right? So, so his point to me, and I'm seeing the other customers as well, is, is, is the interest level in exploiting cloud and making sure you don't you don't uh, incur the the downside of cloud is at, at is at every level of the organization, um, and the CIO typically is is a is a is a key buyer or the, or the key uh, influencer, a key point in that discussion. So uh, our time is running out, but uh, just probably a good place to end is uh, what sort of focus do you have uh, moving forward on uh, Georgia and specifically, I guess, the metropolitan Atlanta area. Well, so, so, so Georgia in general, uh, in the, the, the metropolitan Atlanta area, is, is, is a very rich uh, environment with lots of businesses that, 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 of, of all the like I said. You know, there's manufacturing, there's healthcare, there's, there is uh, uh, you know, high tech, there is um, uh, insurance. All the kinds of businesses that we spoke about earlier, you know, I, th I think Georgia is, is a, uh, is a uh, rich, thriving environment, and and uh, we believe that all those all those businesses need to start leveraging cloud services if they already aren't. Uh, very often they are already, and it's the need sky anyway to understand how to how to gain the benefit of cloud. Um, and and uh, you know that's that's the reason why we're we're uh, you know we, uh, we have our uh, deployed sales teams there, and and just based on the initial interest we've seen, uh, you know we feel that our our bet. Uh, was very well placed. I, I think Georgia and, and, and the, the general Atlantic area, Atlanta area, will be one of our, our, our uh, you know, uh, uh, many we expect because it, it's true in other parts of, of the country as well. But bright spots in terms of, uh, you know, a we bringing value and b the customers are seeing value in what we provide. Well, Rajiv, uh, thank you very much for your insightful comments and thanks for joining me on Tech Talk today. Tina, thank you very much for having me and I, I enjoyed it too. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.